Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll show you a free to play money making guide for 2019. What I'll show you are 10 different money making methods. First of all, I did do a returning players guide and I'm planning to make a playlist for this. Here is the disclaimer. Number one, these are based on today's prices and all these methods are at least 500 kgp per hour or more. The second disclaimer is that these money making methods might not work after I release this video. Finally, I'm gonna include some not so good methods out here, so yeah, just choose which method's right for you. The first method we have are killing chickens. This is located in Fred's farm, which is north of the Lumbridge Combat Academy. There are no requirements for this, although I do recommend 45 magic for the chain ability. For my gear setup, all I have is a staff of air, which will serve you unlimited air runes. So the strategy is really simple. All you gotta do is one-shot them and area loot all the drops. Just follow my ability bar rotation. To enable area loot, go to your gameplay settings, item drops, loot system, and checkbox the first two options. So as you can see right here, the inventory fills up really really fast. Even the eggs spawn very often, so you better be sure to pick these up as much as possible. The closest bank for this is the Combat Academy bank chest. Just use your diagonal surge in order to get there faster. From my free to play bond challenge I did earlier this year, this was the main method I used. When it comes to demand for these items, these eggs are used for cockatrice eggs and then the raw chicken for player owned farm food. The amount of profit per hour you can get from this is around 1 to 1.2 million GP per hour. The second method we have are casting bones to bananas. This can be done at any bank. It requires 15 magic, although I do suggest you have at least 3.5 mil starting cash. Here is the bank preset. First, you want to wield the Staff of Water. In your inventory, make sure you have 2 Earth Runes, 1 Nature Rune, and the rest of your inventory either regular or big bones. You want to quickly load the bank preset and then click the spell from your action bar. As you can see right here, it instantly converts all the bones into bananas in one cast. Regular or big bones will convert both to bananas. However, big bones are a lot easier to buy since they come from the rare drop table. Unfortunately, they have a buy limit of 10k every 4 hours. You should be able to convert around 25k bones to bananas per hour. Now, it can be a bit hard to sell these bananas as they do have a 1k buy limit. They're mostly in demand for fruit bat familiars. You can get around 1.6 to 2 million GP per hour from this. Next up, killing cows. The best location for killing cows is north of the Tavali Lodestone. There are no requirements for this. Bring a staff of air for unlimited air runes. Ring a kinship is for a quick bank teleport. You can one hit KO them for the most part and pretty much area loot the drops. They do have more HP than the chickens however. The inventory will fill up super quick. Unlike chickens however, cows spawn instantly. Yeah that's pretty ironic considering in real life cows breed a lot slower than chicken. If you want a bank just use the ring of kinship. Afterwards use the Taverly lodestone then run a bit north. The demand for this is that beef is used for player owned farms food and cow hide for masterwork or invention components. If you were to compare this to eggs, they're not a really good trade volume. The profit per hour you can get for this is 700k GP per hour. Number 4, Feathering Arrow Shafts. You can do this remotely anywhere. There are no requirements for this, although I do suggest you have at least 1 mil starting cash. You'll add the feathers by clicking the arrow shaft. You can fetch 60 of them at once nowadays, so yeah, the process is more AFK. When it comes to demand, they are in very high demand for fletching training. Unfortunately, feathers and arrow shafts have a 10k and 20k buy limit respectively, so there is a bit of a time gate here. You should fletch up to 45k headless arrows per hour. That in turn will equate to 600k to 700k GP per hour. Method number 5, Tanning Hides. You can do this at any bank chest, although the best bank chest is the Combat Academy. There are no requirements for this. However, I strongly recommend you have at least 8 mil upfront cash and a lot of patience selling and buying these hides as well as leathers. You want to position your camera so that immediately after you load the preset, click the portable crafter. Don't forget to set the portable crafter left click option to tan hides. Now this method is very click intensive, although you can tan 4k to 5k hides per crafter. Unfortunately, you do have to supply your own portable crafters in free to play worlds, as most of these portables are hosted on member worlds. There are only 3 hides that are tannable in free to play worlds. Blue dragon hide, green dragon hide, and cow hides. I wouldn't recommend cow hides because they're on a lower trade volume. 
Unfortunately, each of them have a 10k buy limit. It's very important that you always test your profit margins first before you do this method and patiently sell the leathers. When it comes to demand, they're used for crafting training. Regular cowhide leathers aren't in much high demand however, except for masterwork armor though. You can get around 5 million GP per hour from doing this. This varies a lot because of the profit margins. Number 6, Mining Luminite Ores. It is located in the Dorvin Mines near the Mining Guild. While it requires 40 mining, I do recommend the following. Having 50 mining is really helpful and 15 dungeoneering for the deposit box. For my equipment and inventory setup, you want to have an Addy or a Rune Pickaxe in your tool belt, Rune Ore Box for storage, and the Luminite Stone Spirits. Those who haven't seen the Mining and Smithing rework, the ores will never deplete regardless of how many players are mining this. Some people like to foretake mine to speed up the process, or you can pretty much AFK until you get a full inventory. Ideally, place the ore box in your action bar, so that way you can fill it without interrupting the mining action. So Tony, what exactly are stone spirits? It's funny, because a lot of people hate them in PVM, but when you consume 100 stone spirits, you'll mine 200 ores. They're generally in demand for Addy and Rune Bars. Now this item came in earlier this year, so the supply is pretty small. Some people like to mine runite ores and they're more profit, just because of how cheap the stone spirits are. You do mine them a bit slower however. There's a bank deposit box in the resource dungeon nearby. By using the ore box in the deposit box, you can empty it immediately. The profit per hour you can expect from this is anywhere from as low as 600k, all the way to 1 mil profit per hour depending on your mining level. The seventh method we have is smithing rune arrowheads. You can do this at any anvil, but I like to use the artisan's workshop. It requires 50 smithing, although having a higher smithing and fire making level helps you afk even longer than that. Nowadays you can note the rune bars to the metal bank. What you want to do is start heating up the forge and smithing the anvil. You'll now see a progress bar until you finish the smithing object. For optimal speed, try to keep your heat at 66% or higher, and you can do so by reheating the forge then clicking the anvil. I mean otherwise if you don't want to do that, you can just kinda afk here. Even though you get 75 rune arrowheads per bar, the smithing process is much slower than before. Because rune arrowheads stack, you do not need to bank for this. When it comes to demand, this is extremely cheap, and the xp per hour for fletching is pretty fast. For the profit per hour you can expect around 600k to 800k. This method is relatively safe as the rune bars are going to be cheap in the long term and the rune arrowheads are going to stay at around store price. Number 8, Picking Cabbage. The best location for this is south of Falador. This requires you to complete the Lumbridge Medium tasks as well as being in a clan. Explorer's Ring gives you unlimited teleports to the cabbage fields. You can pick the cabbage one by one and they spawn very very fast. I'm not sure if there is a good alternative spot. You'll use the Clan Vex teleport to bank. They do sell for 900 GP each, although the demand isn't all that great. It's probably for people trying to collect these cabbages, or players using this for player owned farm food. Because of this, I can't guarantee that this method's gonna be consistent. In an hour you should pick around 1.1k cabbages, which in turn is 1 million GP per hour at today's prices. Number 9, Killing Corpse Spiders. This requires the blood pack quest complete, but I do recommend 45 magic and 26 crafting. This is located in the second room of the Lumbridge Catacombs. You should bring Staff of Air plus Law and Earth runes. After you enter the catacombs, climb the stairs immediately. You'll generally use AoE abilities to kill them. You can area loot these spider silks and they drop at 100% drop rate. In order to bank the spider silks, just use the Lumbridge teleport and make your way back there. Eventually when you get bored of this method, you want to craft these spider silks into spider wands. So why do people buy this? Well, these are for cheap and fast imbued components. To be honest, this method may not be fully viable in the long term as these are not in very high trade volume. The current GP per hour you can expect for this is 600k. Number 10, Collecting Limpwort Roots. This only requires 20 dungeoneering, but I suggest at least 88 combat so the hill giants are no longer aggressive to you. This is located in the Edgeville Resource Dungeon. When you enter the Resource Dungeon, area loot the Limpwort Roots inside that. Because there are only 4 spawns in total, I suggest you hop worlds in this case. Otherwise you can fletch Headless Arrows instead while you wait, which in turn is some lossless GP per hour. The closest bank for this is the Verak West Bank. This is a very very long walk to get there and back. 
To be honest, I don't recommend this method if you have the level, as there are a couple of better money making methods than this. They're generally in demand for super strength potions. Limport roots are very cheap nowadays because of Vires, and double XP weekend happened pretty recently. The profit right now is only 500k GP per hour. So this wraps up my 10 free to play money making methods. Again, I cannot guarantee that the profit will be viable long term, and like I said, some of these methods just suck. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and don't forget to stay tuned for part 2.